Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Um, kia ora, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. Hello, guten tag, hola, bonjour. And these are my slides. Now, I've made the slides in English um, because we are an English-speaking country, but if you'd prefer to watch them in English, uh, it, sorry, I made them in Spanish, but if you prefer to watch them in English, there's a QR code for you where you can download the slides, and from there you can also get to the Spanish version again. Today I'm going to talk about Mahara, a portfolio platform. I'm just going to wait very briefly until I don't see any phones held up anymore for the QR code. Um, looking into Mahara, because you can complement your... And I got the signal that the slides don't work yet. And I think I know why, because I didn't want anybody to look at my slides beforehand. So I did not make them public and now they are public. So now it should be working. So what I wanted to do is look at how you can actually complement the learning management system, which we all love, Moodle, with portfolios, because Moodle does not really have a built-in functionality for portfolios. There are a couple of plugins about there, but they don't really allow us so much to do the storytelling. And so what Mahara allows you to do is to put the learner at the center of the attention, and we can create a number of different portfolios. There's, for example, the learning portfolio. Typically, that is used when students just want to record their learning and to also reflect on their learning. This is a portfolio that is not necessarily even being shared with anybody. Then we also have the assessment portfolio. That is the portfolio that we are going to look at today most specifically, because that is typically the portfolio that is then also linked to the learning management system for assessment purposes, which is perfectly done in Moodle. We can also use portfolios for work integrated learning. That is all those things like internships, externships, work placements, when the students are not at your institution, when they are not in the classroom. Because if they are out on internship for four weeks, maybe three months or six months, or if you're sending them overseas for an overseas experience, then you might still want to keep track of them or might still want to provide them with some support. And so you can use the portfolios for that so that your students share their learning experiences and you can then respond to them. Many of you are probably familiar with the next type of portfolio, which is the presentation portfolio, often also called showcase portfolio, because you might have done one yourself to get your current job. Because oftentimes these days, it's not enough to just have a CV or a resume because you might have to showcase what you can actually do, what competencies you have gained, what skills you have, what achievements you have. And that's what you put all into your portfolio. Now we are kind of leaving the formal learning space a little bit and go into the world of work because portfolios exist there as well. We've just had a presentation by our, by our teachers from Minnesota. Teachers have been creating portfolios since the 1970s. Yes, not online, but they've still created portfolios on paper. And I see Brenda nodding there, so she might still remember those big, big binders. Or if we have anybody from healthcare in the room, then they will also remember those binders. All of that can now be done electronically. And so while there are these different types of portfolios that we can create in the platform, they all share things in common. There's always an, some sort of overlap because you can use evidence or reflections that were created originally for a learning portfolio, also in an assessment portfolio, or you can take elements from the assessment portfolio and showcase them when you apply for a job, because that shows the employer also how you have improved. It's not just showing the evidence, but actually making the connection to what you have learned. And that's why we need portfolios because it's not just about the item itself, it is about the learning that comes through that reflection. And so in Mahara, we have a number of activities. The first one that you see here is not really done in the portfolio itself, because first, of course, we need to create content. 
We first need to have something that we can reflect on, that we can use. So that is the creation stage, which often happens outside of the portfolio, in the classroom, on a field trip, um, in a lab. Then we get to the collecting stage, where we collect everything. Typically, you have everything sitting on your computer or maybe now your mobile phone, but you put that into the portfolio area. After that comes the important part, and that's why we need portfolios. It is the curation stage or the reflection stage that we have here. Because just collecting learning evidence, me just collecting my presentation, is not really, I'm not really learning anything potentially. But if I go back to my presentation after I've finished this session here and say what went well and what didn't go so well using my computer, then hopefully I can learn something for next time so that we are not wasting half a minute or a minute while we are trying to connect things. And that is where the learning comes in. Now, oftentimes though, we don't learn on our own. I've got a bunch of colleagues sitting in the Mac in red t-shirts and the Catalyst t-shirt. So they are taking photos and after this presentation, they can tell me what went well and what they think didn't go so well. So through that dialogue then, Again, I can learn more. I can find out, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this next time or maybe I should stand somewhere else. But I can't. I can't because I didn't get fired up beforehand. So that might be something that I need to do. But thankfully, I'm tall enough so that you can see me over my computer screen there, hopefully still. But that's not the only thing. We can't just exchange information and talk to each other, but we can also connect to each other. And so while typically portfolios are a thing that students do on their own, or you as teachers, you as learning designers, you can also create portfolios together in a group project. And that's where the power of Mahara comes in because you don't have to work just on your own. We've seen portfolios where students in project management create them together, where they work together, create journal entries together, and therefore also have that collaboration aspect. Now, of course, we are here at a Moodle mode, so I better tell you something what Mahara has to do with Moodle. And that, of course, is where the connection comes in because we can go from Moodle into Mahara directly via single sign-on done by LTI, which we've just heard about. Um, and also, we can go from Mahara to Moodle in the sense of um, putting... Um, making the portfolios available within Moodle. And all of that is done via web services. We have two options, the external tool and then the plugin. And if somebody wants to take photos of my slides and I'm a bit too fast with the clicker, don't worry, the slides are all publicly available and I'll also post them again just so that you all have the links. Now, with the external tool, um, that comes... By default in Moodle, nothing else to install. The plugin, on the other hand, that needs to be installed. It is written by us, maintained by us, so that it works also with current versions of Moodle. Now, with the external tool, you have very few grading options um, because the external tool allows you only to make that LTI connection, that authentication connection, and then everything happens in the tool itself. Whereas with the plugin, because it integrates into the regular assignment functionality in Moodle, you have all the grading options available to your heart's content that you're used to. So assignment workflows, different grading methods, simple grading, or using a rubric, and all of that is available. And that's why the plugin is so powerful. Then both can actually do the archiving of a portfolio, because it's especially universities have the requirement of keeping assessed items for a very long time. So you can do that. And then we also connect to our original, which is a plagiarism checker. Other checkers can also be supported in the future if that is necessary. Now, let me briefly show you what that looks like on the interface. And again, I'll probably go through a little bit quickly so that we have at least question for, or uh, have time for one question. So if you're setting up a regular assignment, once you have the plugin installed, you see that there's a new option available, Mahara. You can then decide whether the portfolios, once they've been assessed, should be unlocked again so that students can continue editing them or not. 
and you also decide whether they should be archived. Now that I'm a student, I can see all my portfolios from within Moodle. I don't need to go to the tool itself first and pull them in or copy the link and share this portfolio. Everything is right in Moodle. And as soon as I click that, the teacher also sees it in the gradebook. So it's perfect for teachers because they don't use, lose or leave their environment that they are used to for grading. So all of that happens there. And then I can do my simple grading, just put a grade in, or I can use a rubric. And I went a little bit fast over that one. So there you can put your rubric in and use it. Now, Mahada is an open source platform. So it is published under GPL3. That means also that you can host the environment on your own, or you can use one of the certified uh, Moodle partners to host it on your behalf. And being open source, you can also configure it and customize it to your heart's content. And of course, we also take other people's contributions because it's an open source platform. However, in order to get access to Mahara, we do have a subscription model in place since last year, because in contrast to the Moodle community, our community is kind of really, really small because portfolios are not as widely used as learning management systems. And so we didn't have that constant flow of contributions from community members. And now with the subscription in place that goes according to how many active accounts there are, not all accounts, just active accounts over the last year, um, we have the possibility to actually sustain the project um, because now everybody using the software is contributing to the project, not just maybe 5% um, or 10% of people. And so that, of course, allows us to put the project on a more sustainable footing and also continue working on it. Furthermore, we can also have a better defined roadmap because now that we know kind of how many people we can employ at Catalyst and so on, it makes it easier to see what we can do in the future because Catalyst really is the main contributor to the project. And um, it is also possible that we can do bigger projects than we were able to do before. So since I'm almost out of time, if you want to know more, you can find me and my colleagues all in the red t-shirt at the Catalyst stand that has a Mahara banner to the left. So nice and green to differentiate us a bit from, from the rest of Moodle orange and red and blue. Um, and as you'd like, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter where I'm sharing things from the community, where you can meet other portfolio community members and also learn more about Mahara. But if you're more into multimedia, or at least audio media, we also have a podcast. If you want a sticker, you can get that in the sponsor's room. And that is a nice way of sharing the stories from our portfolio community. And so I think Carlos hasn't yet given me another sign, so we should still be good and have a minute and 30 seconds actually available for any questions. <laughs>